Hello and welcome to another episode in my Warhammer 40,000 Conquest series. In this episode, we will be painting our sergeant and captain in Gravis armor. So stay tuned. So welcome back guys and gals. Um, so basically we had the Warhammer day. Um, if you were lucky enough to attend, then you would have had quite a bit of a laugh. Um, I went in there to mostly do the one hour painting challenge and uh, got to use my contrast paints. So that was really fun. I'll put a picture here um, where I got to sort of experiment a little bit with the contrast paint over a silver base and uh, you can see it's quite an interesting um, effect on those pa armor panels so I had a bit of time left and I thought okay let's see if I can get one of these sergeants done in an hour just to challenge myself so keeping with the painting scheme so far so the base and the shades um, I got cracking and uh, here's a picture here so as you can see I did an alright job I even got to neaten up a little bit the only problem is um, because I had forgotten the other unit sergeant at home I didn't have a frame of reference to uh, the details that I had filled out so the back pack uh, the power pack and the little straps on the back haven't been done and um, I also forgot to put some shade on the go for a moment so the, parch uh, the parchment on his arm but aside from that I mean I finished with time to spare so I even did the base as well so I put the texture paint on there and you know looks ready to go so I won't waffle too much because you know, I tried to do the same thing with my lunch breaks but my lunch breaks are split into two halves anyway so I never got to finish that model but um, you, you already know how to paint a Hellblaster you already know how to paint an Intercessor and an Inceptor so if you don't check out those videos um, the, there'll be playlists for the painting things out there and um, we'll focus more on the Captain in Gravis Armour um, this is our first proper sub-assembly painting job to do um, if you check that link up there then you'll see the building video and the reasoning why I went for the, uh, the this option um, simply because I, I feel like it's a lot easier to get in there paint out the base colors and get a solid foundation before you put it all together so now before we start I do have to say that I did spray this blue because I sprayed the whole lot blue just to speed things up um, but I will be doing a quick thin layer of the McGregg blue from the pot so that if I have to touch up any mistakes there isn't any obvious sign of that as the finish from the spray and from the pot paint is just so very slightly different so um, I'll be doing that also uh, to speed things up I sprayed this cloak white um, I don't know why I spread the entire thing like this but um, it's okay because the Mephist and Red will go over that nice and easy but I will be painting back over the armor bits to make sure that they are blue as well now let's get on to the painting so what will we need we're gonna need Abaddon Black to block out some of the details we're also going to need lead belcher to paint pipes and the sword and vents and stuff we'll need rakar flesh for the inside of the cloak we'll then need mephiston red for the outer uh, part of the cloak and then we will need retribute to gold or retribute to armor for the trims and the details on the armor we will then be using Nam Oil and Agrox Earthshade as our shades and uh, then we'll base it with Astro Granite that's that really it's quite a quick and easy one to be honest let's get cracking shall we okay next up is the Abaddon Black 
and you want to you want to aim for the armor joints like so. Just trying to be neat, but remember you can always tidy up at the end. And also areas like bolt gun casing and any other details that you think need to be done like if you're really careful at painting the bone then you can get away with just painting the straps or the wire or the rope right next up is lead belcher and we will be focusing on things like the chains so just paint carefully there try not to get on the armor paint like details on the little bolt gun and of course the sword blade as well make sure you do nice long strokes like that keep it nice and even and put enough paint on your brush so it doesn't dry out as you go along that way you get a nice smooth finish like that the vents like that you've got the center bit um, little bits and pieces here you also do the ammo feed as well and then finally we'll have some details on here like this little bit and this little bit and the bits on the side and so on and so forth and sniffling <laughs> you shut up Okay, so once you finish with the uh, lead belcher, you then move on to rack off flesh. And what you want to do is just do a nice thin coat on the inside of the cloak. Make sure you get into the recesses as well. You'll have to do a couple of layers of this if you haven't uh, base sprayed it like I have. Um, and also, don't forget, you have three oath of moments as well. So you got one just on the upper thigh there you have one under his armpit in there and then one just coming off his arm there right once you've finished doing your rack of flesh you then move on to the mephiston red so with this you want to do the outside of the cloak so again you might need to do a couple of layers of this to make the blue uh, not show through anymore um, I'll suggest using a bigger brush as well instead of a small one but I'm using a small one right now because I'll need it for the wax stamps for the oath of moments like so and also for the uh, straps on the handle of the power sword and finally you want to get a real nice fine point so you can do the lens of the helmet. Don't worry if you uh, make a mistake here because you can always go back over it. There we go. Right, and once you've finished doing that, we then move on to the Retributor Gold. So for this, we'll be doing all the main details. So the uh, skull and wings on the power fist, the rims of the shoulder guns. We'll also be looking at the detail on this shoulder as well. So we want to get all that done. And then we'll move down move down to details like this reliquary and the edges of the scroll and uh, the chest aquila as well and most importantly we'll be doing the hilt of the sword and you can always just paint little details like this little skull here. 
the iron halo as well. So avoid the spikes, avoid the little skull there, but paint the rest of it in that gold, like so. Okay, so also make sure that you get a real nice point and you thin down that gold and you just lightly go over the details of the cake. If you do make any mistakes, don't worry, you can go back over it. But it's a lot easier to not have to do that. Make sure you got your fingers touching as well for the extra stability. Elbows on the table. Like so. And you can turn the model any which way you need to. It's another handy tip as well. Sometimes people think that they need to change the direction of the brush, and you can, but it's a lot easier to move the miniature. And this is really where the uh, benefits of sub-assembly painting really comes into play. Just take your time with it. Sweet. Lovely Japanese. Alright, and then once we're done with that, we then move on to our shades. So you'll need the non oil for any of the uh, silver areas and ingress earth shade for all of the gold areas. Do make sure that you pay extra attention to being careful when shading small details on the cloak and uh, anywhere else. So, just going to apply some non oil. Serious. And then, once this is dried, we'll neaten up any spills and then we will move on to the base. Okay, so once you've uh, allowed those shades to dry and you've neatened up your model, it should look a little something like this. Um, your next move is to put some texture paint down. So, remember. Don't use a brush, use a tool of some kind or a coffee stirrer or an old beat up brush. Don't use any of your good brushes. Make sure you give it a real good shake. And then scoop out what you need onto the base. Hopefully I need a bit more than that. And turn around. And then you just start spreading it around. You can make it as lumpy as you like, but just make sure that you do your best just to push it nicely up against the boots, but not onto the boots. Alternatively, you can just pop the model off the base, paint the base, and then super glue them on. And then when that's dry, you could then put the cape and the helmet and the uh, power pack all on. Okay, and then for the rest of the models that you get in that issue, um, you simply follow the guides that you got previously. So for the Inceptor Sergeant, you just follow the paint scheme for your original Inceptor, but just paint the helmet in red and keep the eye lenses either black or blue. Your Intercessor sergeant you do the same thing again you follow those steps for the hell blasters but with a slight difference because he doesn't have a helmet what i've decided to do instead is paint the back part of the helmet so you can still denote him i know he's helmetless and that's you know a way of showing that he's the unit sergeant but just wanted to add that extra detail because he didn't have a helmet anywhere on his armor whereas the intercessors do so hello and welcome to the community focus section so in this one i asked to see your captain and grab his armor so i've been sent some fantastic examples of your work and uh, there's been some really good paint schemes going on so let's get to it right so we'll start off with V 
Phil Davey. Now he's done a, a salamander's uh, color scheme. He's got a lovely tinted purple cloak there. He's done a nice bit of blending on the sword as well. Um, and the base looks fantastic. And it's a nice solid green color. He's, he's done a really good job with that. Um, so yeah, no, okay, keep up the good work, man. That looks really, really good. Phil Gillings. Now Phil Gillings, he's uh, followed the instructions in the magazine and he's done a very neat job of it. He's also added in some highlights there as well. And uh, yeah, it looks absolutely fantastic. Um, kind of puts my one in, in shame, big time. Looks great, man. Keep up the good work there. Nathan Pooley and um, he's also done a little extra as well so he's done a bit of highlighting there and he's also uh, used the Martian um, texture paint for the base and uh, some transfers there as well uh, which really sort of helped to pull the whole miniature together so yeah it looks absolutely great um, so yeah keep up the great work there man Transfers are not easy to use. Um, next up is Garfi. So, if you don't know who he is, he's a frequent uh, blogger and he's also all over the Facebook groups uh, with fantastic examples of his work. And here he's put up a picture of his Dark Angel scheme um, with a small conversion of swapping out the head. And uh, as you can see, it's, it's a fantastic paint job there. Absolutely amazing. Brilliant bit of blending on the blade. The cloak is smooth. The textures on the base look fantastic. Smooth, clean lines everywhere. And then he's got a comparison with his Ultramarines version, um, which he's done in more classic colors. So instead of having gold on the chest aquila and the shoulder uh, rims, he's gone for that classic yellow. And it looked great absolutely great i really do like it and it sort of brings a bit of nostalgia to the model so uh, thank you again for sharing okay next up is bill morlocks and he's done a fantastic conversion here um he swapped out the head uh, but he's, he's used some bits by the looks of it from the aggressors kit yeah it's the bolt storm gauntlets there you go uh, so he swapped out the face with that he's put in um different shoulder pads as well and uh, he's even thrown in the top knot. And uh, yeah, it looks absolutely fantastic. Um, even the paint scheme is great and he's done a great bit of shading and highlighting there. And he's, he's shown you what you can achieve with so like simple techniques, like you know, swapping out parts with other kits. Um, because the aggressors are in Gravis Armor as well. So everything's to scale. And uh, the base is simple yet effective. Um, so yeah, good going. We also got an entry from Gareth Jeffrey, um, aka the big friendly wargamer. Uh, I'll put his link in the description below. You should check him out. He does some great uh, little updates and he's been keeping himself very busy with uh, an impressive tally of models he's done so far in the year. So definitely check him out. Um, so he's done an Imperial Fist uh, scheme with his captain and it's really really impressive he's, he's done a very strong yellow and it's quite hard to get a smooth yellow like that and he's also done a fantastic bit of detail on the cloak where he's added a celestial theme to it so he's obviously uh, flicked paint onto it and then made a couple of blobs into bigger stars but it's very very effective and it looks really really cool so thank you again for um, entering this week, Gareth, and uh, keep up the great work, man. Right, so that concludes the community focus section. So thank you again for watching. Uh, please do make sure that you subscribe to the channel and uh, the links are down below for my social media. So if you want to post your pictures for the next community focus, just keep an eye out on there. Uh, also, don't forget to check out Big Mech Dan Skull. He does all the weekly reviews, so he gets the issues on release. He goes through the entire issue with you, and he'll bring all his knowledge and experience into that as well to give it a little something extra. 
so well worth checking out the link is in the description below and make sure you say hello from me and that's it so thank you again for joining me and i'll see you in the next one